Hello everyone. My name is Ayush Kumar Rangi, and today I'll talk about different. Uh, I'll talk about the topic which is based on different types of semiconductor detectors for nuclear radiation detection. So in this presentation, I'll talk about the introductory part, which includes uh, introduction of semiconductor detectors, different types of semiconductor detectors, their characteristic characteristics and their working. their advantages and disadvantages over other types of detectors and lastly i'll make the conclusion remark so in introduction so semiconductor detectors they are a particle detector which detects ionization produced by energetic charged particle in the deflection layer of reverse by spin junction in a semiconductor and they are usually made on single crystal of silicon and germanium semiconductor detectors they are essentially solid state analogs with gas field ionization chamber so we already know about gas field detectors they use as gas as a active active uh, material and but in semiconductor detectors they are solid they are solid state materials right they use solid state materials and because solid state materials used in semiconductor detectors are 2000 to 5000 times more denser than gases so uh, they are They are <coughs> semiconductor detectors. They are uh, they have uh, they are uh, using semiconductor materials, right? So that's why they are more dense. So because of they are because they are more dense, so they have more stopping power, right? And uh, as consequently, they have more efficiency. They have they have more efficiency for detection of X-rays and gamma rays. There are various kind of semiconductor detectors which uh, uses uh, semiconductor material. The such kind of detectors. pn junction works as a main detecting region so <clears throat> so what uh, like how it uh, detects any par- particle so when radiation enters the deflection region it creates electron hole pairs which is far in more numbers than a gas field detectors which creates electron and ions so we know that in gas field detectors they <clears throat> they create electron and ions and ion they are very very heavily uh, very heavy particles right so that takes time to reach anode uh, sorry cathode so so due to a relatively high mobility of an electron in semiconductor time resolution is great very great in such detector uh, so electron we know that uh, they take very less time in semiconductor uh, to reach uh, anode so that uh, basically they have more high mobility so In next slide, uh, I have uh, I have shown the uh, basic kind of semiconductor detector. As you can see here, there is a it is the deflection region in which we incident any energy energy like uh, radiation. So it creates any uh, it creates electron and hole pairs, and these electron and hole pairs they are swept away by electric field, which is applied with uh, external voltage, and after after they are collected in the uh, anode cathode they create pulse and we measure this pulse by any emitter right so this is the working principle so here uh, after that we talk about some types of semiconductor detectors so there are mainly three types of semiconductor de- semiconductor detectors they are the diode detectors in which there are pn junction detectors and pn de- detectors pn means uh, pin detectors they are also called pin detectors and after that lithium drifted detectors in which there are there is silicon which is silicon lithium drifted detector jelly which is a germanium uh, lithium drifted detectors after that there, there is high purity germanium detector and after that there is current like you know state of art like modern technology uh, modern uh, detector which are cadmium telluride and mercury iodide detectors some of the uh, applications of semiconductor detectors detectors the diode detectors pn junction detectors are used in alpha beta detection basically alpha spectroscopy and pn detectors they are used in photon dosimetry while as lithium drifted detectors uh, uh, in lithium drifted detectors jelly detectors they are used in gamma spectroscopy and uh, silicon detectors they are used in x ray spectroscopy but we see that high purity germanium detectors they are also used in gamma spectroscopy but uh, we are, so here we note that 
they are fragile detector and high parity fragile metal detectors they are both used in gamma, gamma spectroscopy but nowadays only high parity germanium detectors are have been used because they uh, cause gel detectors they have to be they have to kept all the time uh, even storage and working time they have they always have to to be kept in liquid nitrogen temperature so that's why uh, we have replaced them with high parity germanium, det germanium detectors for uh, especially gamma ray spectroscopy so characteristics and working are semiconductor detector so in semiconductor detectors the detection operation is based on the properties of the pair junction with reverse bias here application width under the reverse bias condition is given by this equation so as you can see this equation is the dielectric constant v is the voltage which is reverse bias voltage I is the electron charge and n is the impurity or density hence the higher the reverse bias voltage higher the thickness of the deflation region and some other characteristic of semiconductor detector is that it, uh, their conductivity lies between conductor and insulator. And the, for working, we have I have already talked about the working principle of semiconductor detectors. So here the radiation incident upon the adjunction, and after that electron hole pairs they are produced as it passes through it and these electron holes pairs they are served away with the influence of electric field and after that charge collect uh, the electron and holes which are collected on anode cathode they are they collected electron hole electron hole pairs they produce a pulse the time taken to collect all the charges in gas counter is order of milliseconds where in semiconductor it is order of 10 to minus 7 seconds so describes that uh, this uh, this describes that in semiconductor detectors there is high mobility of charges. The next slide. Uh, so uh, actually, I talked about types of semiconductor detectors in which they are the first came was diode detectors. I'll talk about diode detectors, diode detectors now. So diode detectors for alpha or beta spectroscopy are thin silicon, silicon wafers, sometimes germanium also. The, the active volume of the detector, a region of relative purity is variously known as deflation region. So we already know about deflation region, right? The thickness, the thickness of the deflation region is so small that only charged particles like alpha particles can deposit it, deposit a significant amount of energy in the detector. So we already know that alpha particles they have uh, less penetration depth. So the the detectors which which have less uh, thickness of uh, deflation region they can only they they only detect alpha particle because alpha has less uh, penetration depth. <clears throat> so when these detectors are operated in pulse mode, the uh, they are only suitable for for use with charged particles so they are they are uh, when they are operated in pulse mode they are uh, they are suitable to they are suitable for the use of charged particle detection and when they are operated in current mode they can be used they can be used for uh, both x-ray and gamma rays and as well as charged particle detection the major types of diode detectors include uh, pain junction diode detectors in which there is diffused junction detector and surface barrier detectors and passivated ion impacted planar PIP detectors also as well and, and there is another type which is PIN detector diode detectors I'll talk about diffuse junction detectors and surface barrier detectors in the next slides diffuse junction detectors so they are fabricated by exposing vapor of n type impurity generally phosphorus one surface of homogeneous crystal of p-type converting it to the n-type layer a junction is therefore formed at a distance from the surface typically that ranges from 0.1 to 0.2 micrometer so here what we do is we take a vapor of n-type impurity and diffuse it to the p-type material so that uh, the upper layer of n-type material it becomes the after after diffusing after deposing the 
deposition of effort it becomes a heat as material and it between that becomes a junction that that uh, that uh, that, uh, that is formed a junction so and it typically ranges between the depth of 0.2 to 0.1 uh, micrometer and for much of surface layer remains about the fission region and represent that region through which the incident particle must pass before reaching the deposition region so uh, as you make this uh, junction uh, in, in between the p, p type layer and n type layer so of the above p type layer it acts as a uh, acts as a dead layer because whenever any charged particle uh, 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 enters to the <coughs> enters through the p type layer which which had to enter directly to the um, junction region uh, but it is uh, not at all directly imposing imposing its energy to the junction so that's why we can say that p type material it acts as a that that uh, that uh, that layer uh, so yeah because of this there is poor energy resolution because some of the, some of the energy it gets deposited in uh, p type material upper layer or dead layer so this is the main disadvantage of this and because of this this material uh, these detectors have been replaced surface various detectors so their manner their manner of fabrication is like a thin vapor of n type silicon is pitched with an acid vapor under the condition that promote exudation so here the oxidation of silicon so it uh, oxidation of silicon uh, happens uh, so after that after that oxidation uh, we already know that so after the uh, oxidation of silicon silicon oxide is made uh, and the resulting thin layer of silicon oxide on the surface has the property of pre-type pre material. So uh, we know that uh, SiO2 acts as a pre-type material. After the oxidation is removed from all but one surface, the surface with the pre-type oxide, oxide, oxide layer is coated with a thin layer of coal to serve as a cathode. So here as you can see, here in type material it is oxidized. Uh, oxidized with vapor, acid vapor and after that the SiO2 layer has been formed here and this SiO2 layer, uh, layer has, uh, it is coated with cold to serve as a cathode and other layer which uh, other side of the detector is coated with aluminum to serve as a cathode anode so yeah we can take Ni or aluminum to serve as a uh, to coat and to make it anode Uh, so here uh, we we'll talk about pi and r detectors. Pi and pi and r consist of large large relatively pure anchored in region that is sandwiched between a heavily probed p type region or a heavily probed n type region. We already know about pi and uh, detector uh, pi and uh, materials or pi and diodes which are which are which are used in electronics. So here P indicates the beta material, I, I indicates the intrusive and N indicates the inter material. The depletion region extend, extends almost completely across the intrusion region. When, when reverse bias, the volume of the depletion layer is not affected by the applied voltage. So as we had seen in PN junction, the, all the depletion, all depletion uh, uh, width, it was dependent on voltage. But here, as we, as we can see, it is not at all dependent on voltage. The large depletion region gives P and detector a much larger sensitive volume than the P and junction detectors. So it is the main advantage of such kind of detectors. This makes it more suitable for X-ray and gamma ray detection and spectroscopy. So because of this, it has a more, uh, more volume to uh, to sense uh, any radiation. So consequently we can detect x-ray and gamma ray for such uh, from such kind of detector for photons above 16 kilotron volt electron elect electron volt the predominant interaction with the detector is Compton scattering this causes loss as we know already hence the efficiency is more or less independent of photon energy typical interesting energy efficiency are on the order of uh, 1 to 2 percent so we see that efficiency has been decreased because of this Compton scattering. 
uh, after emitting 16th electron volt photons. So in next slide, we'll talk about lithium tetrad detectors. So yeah, we we had seen already the large detectors. Uh, so why we use lithium tetrad detectors? Because we have we had large detectors. So as we know that in PN junction, the ablation thickness depends on resistivity of material and applied and applied voltage. And it generally ranges between one to two millimeter. So it was dependent on voltage and resistivity that the ablation gives. For charge particle detection, this much thickness is insufficient and requires some artificially created address condition, which increases detection detection volume. <coughs> So for uh, high energy detection, we needed more. Um, we needed more th uh, depletion thickness or width. So for that, we we incorporated such kind of uh, technology like lithium detecting uh, to increase um, basically the uh, depletion width. This is done by lithium compensation of beta chemical, which we'll see in the next slide. Yeah, so in continuation, uh, there are two types of lithium drifted detectors. Uh, lithium drifted silicon detectors, silly detectors, and lithium drifted germanium detectors, which are known as jellic detectors. Unlike unlike the semiconductor detectors, lithium drifted detectors can be manufactured in very large sizes, like many cubic centimeters. As such, lithium drifted detectors are primarily designed for gamma ray or X-ray spectroscopy. So now we See, so we'll talk about the lithium drifting process. Lithium drifting is a method employed with three types of silicon or germanium to compensate for the acceptor impurities. So, what we uh, understand by this compensate uh, term, uh, so we would uh, see in the like next few lines what this the entire process might take two or two weeks or so. So, it, it is the long process basically. A silicon or germanium crystal. Uh, so we uh, here we talk about the lithium, uh, lithium drifting process basically, uh, in which uh, it is the diffusion process, uh, which I will talk about in this point. A silicon or germanium crystal is exposed to a silicon uh, lithium vapor at 16 degrees Celsius, and lithium uh, atoms are very uh, so they are very small lithium atoms, and it possesses one unpaired electron. It is a property of li uh, lithium atom, and uh, so silicon or crystal, uh, germ crystal it is exposed with lithium vapor at 60 degrees Celsius. With a reverse bias applied, the lithium atoms migrate or drift through the crystal. And uh, the lithium atoms they locate and pair up with the acceptor impurities in the crystal. Uh, the, after drifting, uh, uh, after uh, drifting, they locate and pair up with the acceptor impurities in the crystal. The lithium atoms and paired electron fill the positively charged holes associated with the impurities. So yeah, so this is the basically the compensation technique. So as we know that uh, lithium uh, lithium uh, atom they are the uh, accepted atoms. So they when they um, when they uh, pair up with the next uh, 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 sorry I made a mistake. Lithium atom they are the donor. Uh, donor atoms. So when they pair up with the acceptor atom, they uh, they creates a uh, like you know interest interesting uh, kind of material, and so this is known as compensation. The com the compensation process is stopped before the entire crystal is compensated, and the central core is left as free time materials because we don't want whole crystal to be compensated because after that it would no it would be of no use, right? The compensated region of crystal, which behaves as if it were a tall material, and it serves as a uh, sensitive volume of the detector. So here we can see that uh, lithium was with the lithium vapor was uh, deposited, and it uh, it got drifted through the crystal. And here we made the interesting region, and here we can see the p-type material is there, and n n type layer is there. After all the lithium drifting process, and in lithium drift, uh, drift uh, drifted detectors, there are some silly detectors. 
so they are made from uh, lithium drifting, drifting process of p-type lithium drifted uh, lithium diffused silicon they are often uh, referred as silly detectors and they are primarily used for excellent spectroscopy and low energy gamma ray detection and other one is uh, that they must be operated operated at liquid nitrogen temperatures they can come up to room temperature during storage uh, because uh, lithium has very low mobility in silicon uh, in silicon than germanium so so uh, what we uh, understand by this topic is that like uh, during storage yeah silicon detectors they can come up to uh, room temperature because in, uh, because uh, lithium atom in silicon they have they have low mobility so that's why they uh, don't ring the detectors physically and so we will talk about this uh, we, we will more talk about this uh, in the next slide uh, so they are uh, silicon detectors they are less efficient than gel detectors for high energy photon with lower charge so we already know that uh, gel uh, germanium they have uh, more uh, mass number than the silicon detectors because of this they are they are more uh, efficient so here figure shows the main free path of proton in silicon and germanium and here it is obvious that the depletion depth of at least several centimeters is required for silly due to this uh, due to this it's higher uh, due to its higher atomic number germanium has a much larger linear attenuation constant and which leads to shorter mean free path thus a g is preferred for hard x-ray gamma ray detection to achieve higher detection efficiency so in, as you can see here uh, minimum free path is on y-axis and the photo energy is in uh, x-axis so say uh, silicon uh, in silicon the minimum free path is more uh, more right so it can travel like uh, a photon can travel more and uh, in germanium uh, for, uh, it has a shorter mean free path so because of this uh, uh, Germany, Germany is preferred for hard X-ray gamma ray because uh, because as it has uh, as it has a, a shorter mean free path, it deposits all its energy in this path, right? So it's more efficient. <coughs> so jelly detectors. Here, this lithium drifting follows the same approach as in the silly, and they are referred to as jelly detectors. And they are used for gamma spectroscopy, like basically. Uh, but here they must be called, uh, they must be kept cold at all the times during the operation and as well as storage. Uh, otherwise, they will have to be refracted. So they are not produced anymore because they have been replaced with, uh, they have been replaced by high priority germanium detectors. So we will talk about that. If a uh, gel detector comes up to room temperature, the lithium atoms will have sufficient thermal energy to migrate away from the impurity sites. So, yeah, it was not the case for silicon detectors. So, this is not uh, an issue with silicon detectors since the atoms of silicon crystal have a relatively close spacing. So, the lithium atoms are relatively immobile in silicon crystal. So, we see that see we had seen this point in silicon detectors. Are the atoms in germanium crystal are more widely separated and the lithium atoms can move free, uh, move very freely and thus it becomes very necessary to maintain jelly detectors at liquid nitrogen temperature to fix the lithium atom at impurity sites so it was the uh, it is the major setback of this kind of detector so if the detector warms up and compensation is lost the detector can be refracted re but this process is expensive and the detector performance may not be quite good as it was. So yeah, it affect, uh, we don't want uh, any detector to be reflected and put our money right. The detector might warm up because of failure of cryostate. This is one condition it could happen, right? It is not necessary. Uh, the failure of cryostate seal. If a seal fails, the vacuum in the cryostate is lost and the liquid nitrogen in the DVR will be rapidly used up. It is just a condition. Although all lithium, lithium detected and high purity detectors must have must must be operated at low temperatures to reduce noise, and the jelly must be always kept at uh, 
liquid nitrogen temperature even during the storage so lithium uh, jelly uh, yeah this is one the point uh, one of the point that jelly is most prepared uh, always at always at the uh, liquid nitrogen temperature so high priority germanium is required so using silicon or germanium of normal semiconductor purity purity is in weight beyond 2 or 3 millimeter are difficult to achieve despite applying a voltage here to break down so so uh, we had seen that in silicon and germanium of normal semiconductor purity we were uh, we were increasing the deficient width uh, from the help of voltage right and but we could only achieve we, uh, we could uh, only achieve 2 or 3 millimeter uh, range of uh, uh, deficient width so much if much greater thickness is uh, if uh, it is required for gamma spectroscopy so so that uh, because of that we have to uh, increase the width right so so how does it happen so we will see so we have already seen the deficient width this is uh, it is given by this equation and uh, here if you see the end right it is impurity level so if you want to uh, reduce the impurity level or increase the also the increase the purity we could achieve it with large we could achieve larger width with uh, reducing impurity right by reducing the denominator we could uh, we could increase the d hpg system deal with the problem of impurity by reducing these impurities to an inconsequential level right only one impurity will be found for every 10 to 12 atoms of germanium it is very much pure material so despite the low levels of impurity high purity germanium will be classified as either n type or p type material get simply operated by applying a reverse bias across germanium because we don't need a sophisticated kind of uh, thing further because they are already very much purified purified and their deficient width is already uh, increased right cool is if cooling is still important because germanium has narrow energy bandwidth and at two room temperature thermally generated charge carriers induce noise so we know that germanium they have uh, you know small uh, energy band gap so that thermally uh, generated noise uh, or uh, it could uh, electrons they could uh, induce a noise right so we still want a cooling mechanism for high priority germanium joint refining technique is employed so yeah joint refining so you might have studied that so it is used for uh, for the production of high priority germanium detectors high priority germanium uh, detectors have two advantages over jelly detectors they can be allowed to warm up up to room temperature during storage so they don't need uh, any uh, cryostatic kind of thing for for storage and they can be produced more quickly than jelly detectors so these are some advantages so i have shown uh, this picture of jelly uh, high priority germanium detector in which, which uh, there is a casing and inside it uh, in cylindrical shape there is a high priority germanium detector and uh, this is the uh, graph which shows the uh, high energy resolution and time resolution of hpg detector in compare in comparison with an uh, an uh, tl which is scintillator detector so uh, here we can see that uh, it is uh, there are two spikes or uh, there are three spikes basically and uh, it could easily uh, uh, it could easily show that uh, we have a high resolution uh, high resolution of energy because fwhm of this spike is very much low while in uh, scintillator detector fwhm is very much high so that uh, by like you know nearby space uh, near nearly spacey or uh, spaced energy uh, energies we we cannot easily uh, we cannot easily uh, uh, detect, uh, uh, resolve them basically so is high uh, high energy resolution is achieved with hpg detector and as well as time resolution so after that there comes uh, uh, some state of art detectors and modern detectors cadmium uh, telluride and uh, 
uh, mercury iodide detectors. The major disadvantage of lithium decay detectors is requirement of continuous cooling during the operation. And materials like CDT and STI2 have been developed for such problems. The energy needed for the production of electron hole pairs for CDT and STI2 is larger than silicon and germanium, hence, it has lower energy resolution. So, here we can see that these kind of detectors were uh, made, with, made to, to tackle the problem of uh, continuous cooling, but although they have low energy resolution because uh, they, uh, they have to make electron hole pair they require more energy so so but they are more useful and handy when room temperature temperature operation and smaller volume is required so so they these detectors, detectors have their own advantages so we use them according to our requirement some pros and cons so uh, so we see some uh, pros and cons of semiconductor detectors versus other detectors we have already seen but let's again see it so semiconductor detectors their material density is 100 times and uh, 1000 times of gas they have much for they are much smaller than gas filled one they have greater interaction probability they are widely used in de detection of high energy and electron and gamma rays they have higher energy resolution than other types of detectors uh, for, um, uh, and for gamma ray and charge particle detection they have a higher resolution uh, the energy required to create electron hole pair is very small as created by a large number of charge carriers compact in size good time characteristics and some of the drawbacks are they require additional cryogenic system to cool the semiconductor before operated and high susceptibility of these devices to perform degradation from radiation induced charge damage. So, what does it mean? So, uh, like in semiconductor detector, when radiation comes, uh, it uh, <coughs> it damages it because uh, there are some uh, trapping centers in semiconductor. So, from that, it could it could reduce the efficiency of such kind of uh, detector like semiconductor detector. So these are some drawbacks. So lastly, I'll talk about conclusion. I'll make some conclusion remark. So we see that nowadays semiconductor detectors are widely used in different industries like hospitals and in some in some research institutions as well. There are different kinds of semiconductor detectors according to their properties and working condition. Therefore, we use them as per our requirement. They give higher time and energy resolution compared to its counterparts like gas field one and scintillator detectors so uh, they are the best detectors for gamma spectro gamma spectroscopy in terms of energy resolution so if you want to if you want to have very good resolution for gamma spectroscopy we we go for basically semiconductor detectors because they are very much convenient and Although the gas field detectors and scintillator detectors, they are also used in some areas, but uh, yeah, but semiconductor detectors they are used mainly for uh, they are um, they are good for gamma ray spectroscopy. So yeah, here I uh, conclude my presentation. I hope you liked it. Thank you.